so you want an exotic supercar, but you don't necessarily have the 200 grand to spend on a 570S or a Huracan. Well, although these aren't cheap cars, they're definitely cheaper, and at this point, you might be ready to do whatever it takes to get that supercar thrill. I had to beat an old lady with a stick to get these. Well, here are eight of the cheapest, awesome supercars you can get, with almost all of them under 100,000 bucks. Let's get into it. I have to say beforehand, these prices are based on clean, low mileage cars within 150 or 200 miles of my area. I usually stay closer than that for these lists, but because these are less common, I had to look a little further. I didn't want to lowball any prices because I saw way too many articles showing unrealistic numbers. <coughs> Motor trend. <coughs> Some people might also disagree that a couple of these are even real supercars, but my requirements were that they look exotic, aren't common, and have a supercar presence for one reason or another. The C7Z06 is probably the best example of a contrast controversial supercar even though I didn't add it. I consider them to be supercars because of the performance, looks, sound, and uncommonness of the Z06s, but I do know a lot of other people think they're too common or not special enough, which is understandable. Finally, let me know in the comments what you think makes something a supercar and how you like this video since I usually stick to only American car videos. Now past all that babbling, the first car is the 06-16 Aston Martin V8 Vantage. These usually seem to cost between fifty-five dollars and $90,000, which is a huge range, but similar to other cars on the list, I'd guess that's from a few different things. First, they had a really long lifespan, and over that lifespan, they had a good amount of upgrades and revisions. Over the years, these had either 4.3 or 4.7 liter V8s, making between 380 and 430 horsepower. Granted, they're not all that powerful compared to cheap muscle cars, but that's not what Astons are all about anyway. I already feel like a spy or something cool when I'm driving in a suit, but I can't even imagine what it would feel like to drive one of these in a suit. In my eyes, Astons are probably the ultimate class machines. Second, even though I only looked at cars with well below 50,000 miles for these prices, the age of these cars makes a big difference to the type of people buying them. Think about who would usually be buying Astons. They're older people who usually want that comfort and nice interior, so they're more likely to pay extra for a newer year rather than some guy in his 20s who wants a Corvette ASAP and doesn't care as much about how new the interior is as long as it's in good condition. Next up is another Aston, but this one is the DB9. I was originally going to keep the two Astons together because they're so similar, and it's mostly up to preference as far as which one you like more. Although the Vantage is still really clean, the DB9s go even further into the James Bond style since the DBS is built off of them. Price-wise, these are also very similar to the Vantages. Because of all the years and revisions, they can cost anywhere between 55 and 100 grand, with the ones made before like 09 or 2010 usually close to that 55 mark. With a big 5.9 liter V12 though, these are more powerful than the Vantages with 450 to 540 horsepower. The downside is they're a good amount heavier with a weight range about 300 pounds higher. The third car for today is actually the second to last front engine one here, and it's the Maserati Gran Turismo. These are actually the cheapest cars on the list, usually costing between 45 and 75 k after all the depreciation they've seen. Although they don't make super crazy power with between 405 and 454 horsepower, these have a special place in my heart, trying not to sound too weird or cliche. The first time I went to a Cars and Coffee, I ran into one of these on the road that sounded so unreal. Driving next to it gave me a nice little fizzing sensation. Ever since then, I've really liked these. I don't know if I would buy one because I'm so much of a C7 guy, but these are fantastic cars and they look great in my opinion. They have either 4.2 or 4.7 liter V8s and they're a little on the heavier side, usually weighing between a little over 4,100 pounds and a little under 4,400 pounds. Fourth today for the cheapest supercars is a classic for all bargain performance car lists, and it's the R35 GTR. They are still making these, but to stay in the lower range of seventy-five to ninety thousand bucks, I was only finding ones made between 2009 and 2016, which still gives you a lot of years to choose from. For a little bit of time years ago, I actually questioned if a C7 was really my future goal and if I should consider other cars. The two other ones I was choosing between were actually the V8 Vantages and these GTRs. 
Although I ended up sticking with the C7 and it stayed in my head ever since, the other two cars are still great deals. The GTRs from these years have twin turbo 3.8 liter V6s that make between 480 and 545 horsepower. Between the GTR reputation, the tunability of these cars, and the all wheel drive paired with whatever power you can get it up to, these are just all around great options and it's easy to see where all the hype comes from. Next up is the 14 to 19 at BMW i8 costing between 85 and $100,000. Looks pretty awesome, doesn't it? It's futuristic without being overdone, it's got those badass butterfly doors, and obviously a great mid-engine design. Speaking of the engine, you'd probably guess it's some super efficient, high-performance power plant, right? Maybe it's got a V8. No. Alright, then maybe a V6. No. An inline four? No. Turns out, it's got an inline three-cylinder engine. serious? It is turbocharged though, so it actually pushes out an earth pounding 231 horsepower to the rear wheels. In all seriousness though, it's got two electric motors up front, so although it's still not a great amount of power and it only results in around a 4 second 0 to 60, in total it makes about 360 horsepower. Also because of that powertrain setup, it's got a pretty good four wheel drive system. The ones from 2017 and earlier usually stay around that 85,000 mark, but after that they get expensive quick. Personally, because that three cylinder engine will never sound good to me and the power really isn't there, I don't think I'd ever even consider buying one of these, but that's just because they're not my style. They do look great when you see them on the highway or out of meat, and clearly they weren't meant to be some powerful screaming machine anyway. And on the idea of mid-engine all-wheel drive supercars, next up is the 08 to 2015 Audi R8 V8. With low miles, these usually cost between 90 and 100,000 bucks and make 420 to 430 horsepower from a 4.2 liter V8. Although R8s are mostly known as cheaper versions of the V10 Huracan, these V8s are still decent deals considering the V10s cost 130k or more. That being said, I don't know if in the R8 community these V8 R8s are the equivalent of EcoBoosts in the Mustang community. Either way though, I highly doubt these are boring to drive or own because it's only a V8. I also doubt anyone would get excited from seeing an R8, then when they realize it's a V8 instead of a V10, they'd be like... <laughs> it's still an awesome looking car, it is kind of known as being Iron Man's car, and it's got quite a reputation. For the second to last supercar, we have the Ferrari 360, which usually costs between 90 and 110 grand. These have pretty small 3.6 liter V8s, so the torque is a lower 276 pound feet, but the 400 horsepower these push out is not bad. They're also the lightest car here by more than 250 pounds, and you're getting into the semi-modern Ferrari club with these, which isn't too easy. I'm personally way more of a Gallardo fan, because I like the V10 sound more, but the cheapest Gallardo I was seeing in today's market was 105,000 bucks and they easily went over that. For the final car on the list, we've got the Mercedes AMG GT, usually costing between 95 and 110K. Although I think these look pretty damn good, they definitely have a more conservative design. With a darker paint job in busy city streets, it might go unnoticed by some people, but probably not considering how low it is and how insanely long that front end is. For the two cheaper GT and GTS trims, the 4 liter V8 with two turbos mounted between the cylinder banks makes either 456 or 515 horsepower. Although the Astons probably have to take the spot of classiest on the list, I'd say these are probably next in line with a very sophisticated style. Honorable mentions are the Gallardo I mentioned, the final gen Viper, McLaren MP412C, and the second gen NSX. I didn't officially include these in the list because they're a little too expensive with the Gallardo at about 120k and the rest usually around 130 grand or more. There are also a shit ton of Porsches that give good performance at decent prices, but I'll be honest, there are too many different but similar trims I could have talked about, and beyond knowing which model is which and the highest trims they have, I don't really understand them that well. Another one is also the C7Z06 because like I said, the performance, price, sound, and more aggressive looks are good enough, and I'd say the Z06 trim is just barely uncommon enough on the road. But I know not everyone will agree with that, and that's totally fine. Let me know which of these is your favorite, or if I should have added or taken any cars out. I'd have to say my favorite's probably the R8s, but I'm also a big fan of the Vantages and GTRs. For anyone new to the channel, I upload American car news and content like this every week. If you've got questions or requests, drop a comment below or send me a DM on Instagram. As always, thank you guys all so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. I'll see you all next week. Have a great day.